Hi, this is Cindy with Vintage Chenu with another video tutorial. This tutorial goes with my um, ruffled diaper cover pattern. Um, this is the back of the diaper cover and this is the front and they've both been cut on the fold. Um, you'll notice on the pattern that on the back you mark, there's two dots, and on this one it's here and here and I've marked it on both sides the same. And then um, we're going to take a ruler and we're going to um, go across and connect these two dots. This is where the ruffle is going to get sewn onto the back of the diaper cover. Now, um, the third ruffle is going to get attached in this top seam and I'll show you that when we get there. Um, I am using a pen, or excuse me, a pencil that washes out. Um, it leaves a nice faint line when you go across. Um, it looks like this. It's called a, um, a washout pencil. And um, the first time this is washed it will come out. Uh, but I've done it light enough that when I cover it up it shouldn't even show. So let me show you what we do next. All right, the ruffles, um, you need to finish the seams. On these, I did a rolled hem on my serger. You can do a hand rolled hem, just turn it a very little hem and then turn it again and flat sew it. If you have a rolled hem foot on your sewing machine, you can do that. Um, I'm going to give you the finished size in the pattern and then you'll determine um, how much you take off when you do your rolled hem or how much you need when you turn up your hems to come out with a specific finished size. Now, I am going to run a gathering stitch about three quarters of an inch down from the top. And when I sew the ruffle on, I'm going to sew it at about a half an inch from the top. And when I'm done, I'm going to pull out the gathering stitch because you don't want to have two stitches showing in your ruffle. So let me show you what that looks like and I'll be right back. Okay, you can see I have sewn the ruffle on and I took time to make sure my gathers were nice and even and that I kept them straight. They're not all, all, all over the place and crooked. It just looks really nice and neat. Um, I wanted to show you that you leave a little bit on the end on both sides. Now, I also said that we were going to pull out our, our gathering thread. So pull that out now so that that's gone. All right. Now, the reason we leave this on the edge here is we want to have extra fullness here. And if you notice, this ruffle comes down below the leg here. That's just not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half like that. All right. And see, it puts this up over a half an inch from there. And then we're going to pull it in just a little bit with that extra added fullness that we left. So it kind of has a little push out like that. Because if you don't, when you sew your ruffle flat, it will go flat um, in the seam. So, in the side seam. So fold it in half, push it over so that it looks nice and full, and then trim it off. Okay. So that your side seam is flush and put a pin in it to hold it. Put your pin so the head faces out this way so when you put your um, front on top of this and you're sewing your side seam you can see your pins and pull them out. So do this the same on the other side. Now my one tip is you want to do your bottom ruffle then your mid middle ruffle. If you do them backwards and do your middle ruffle and then try to do the bottom ruffle, you're always having to pull this up to work underneath of it. And you will only do that once if you do it and then you'll remember. So do the bottom and then the middle. So here we are with the second ruffle attached and I did it just like before. I did my gathering stitch but I sewed about half an inch down and I sewed this half an inch down line right on the line that we drew. Okay, um, You can see I left a little off the edge on both sides. Um, the reason for doing this on this one is if you pull it flat like this when you put your side seam in, see how that flattens that ruffle out? Take just a little of this excess and push it back 
not enough to bend this down, but just to pull it back over a little bit, and not a ton, but some. Go ahead and pin it. Trim off the side so that it the side seam is nice and even. All right. Okay. And take this pin and move it back so that it goes out into the seam that way. And I even like to put another pin up here. And do the same on the other side. Okay, I did the same thing on my last ruffle. Um, this top ruffle does not have to have this side finished. This is a raw edge. I did it right to the raw edge here. I did a slight, just slightly under quarter inch hem all the way down. I did the same thing with pushing the ruffle up to make it nice and full right there. So this is what the ruffles all look like so far. The next step is going to be taking the diaper cover front and placing it right sides together and sewing the side seam on both sides. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, here's what it looks like. Um, I sewed my side seam on my sewing machine because I had so many pins in it. So I sewed it first and then went back and did the serger after I had made sure I had every pin out of the way because it's a terrible mistake when you run over a pin with your serger. If you don't have a serger, when you sew this side seam, trim it down and then um, do a nice zigzag edge on it so that you have a nice finished edge. Okay, our next step is, um, it's going to sound a little bit hard, but it's not. If you pay attention and just do how I show you to do it, um, we're going to add the casing to the top of this diaper cover. Lay it out flat like you have it here. Let me get you turned a little more. Okay. Line up the fold of the the casing waistband exactly with the side here. So that's lined up exact. All right. And then we're going to come over to here and we're going to cut this so that we leave a 3/8 inch seam allowance right here when we cut. And you can use a ruler and a pencil and draw that on so that you get it exactly right. So now what we have is a waistband that's going to be the exact same size when we sew the seam as the top of our diaper cover. I had some technical difficulties on my first go around um, video, so, but this is really important and I want to show you how to do it. So this is the waistband, it's just a mock-up of it. Um, you're going to take and you're going to do a half an inch that you sew here at the top. You're going to skip an inch and then sew the rest of the way down. So you sew a half an inch, skip an inch, and then there you sew the rest of the way down. And the rest of the video is pretty self-explanatory, but my explanation of this didn't come out. So now you have it. So here I have sewn that half an inch, skipped an inch, and did this. Now I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to press these seams to one side. Then I'm going to fold it in half this way. All right, and then I'm going to press it all the way around like that. Now on the front side, which will show in the back of your diaper cover, see it's a nice sewn seam. On the inside, we have a seam allowance down here that's sewed. Then we have a hole where we're going to put our elastic in and then go around and that's going to be the casing for our elastic. So let me go iron this and show you what we do next. Okay, here's the waistband that's been pressed. You'll see that the hole is right here. I have marked the center back of my diaper cover and I'm gonna place it going around the top. I'm gonna pin it all the way around with the hole facing out. Um, that'll be the wrong side. The good side is the right side. So let me pin that around and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here it is pinned all the way around um, with the hole showing back here. Now I'm going to take this over and I'm going to sew a 3 8 inch seam all the way around the waistband. 
Okay, I sewed all the way around. I used my serger again to finish the seam. Again, you could trim it by hand and do a nice zigzag seam so that you have a nice finished seam on the inside of your waistband. Now, the one other thing I'm going to do is sew um, like an eighth inch top stitch around the top of this casing. And what that'll do is cause almost a little ruffle effect when we put the elastic in. And after I do that, I'm gonna put the elastic in and you match it according to the chart. Okay, I'm getting ready to do the elastic that goes around the waist. And one trick I like to do is to take my elastic and mark one end and then figure out which end should go over the top of it to make the waistband and then go ahead and mark that with an X and so when it goes through the waistband I can line these up and know that I don't have twists in with my elastic inside the waistband so put your safety pin in one side and you find that opening that we have in the back okay you can see that little um, top stitch I did there. You just find that opening and you wiggle your elastic into that opening. Now we're just going to pull the elastic all the way around, being careful not to pull the end in because if you do that you have to start over and I'll see you at the other side. Okay, I got both sides of my elastic out. I match my X's to each other and then I attach it going back and forth three or four times like so and then the next thing you do is just work this down into the top of the diaper cover and distribute your gathers okay so here's what it looks like once you get the elastic distributed and the gathers um, distributed there is the top of your diaper cover now here in the back you still have um, a hole you can sew that closed by hand or you can take it over to your machine and put it in your machine and just do a simple zigzag stitch across to, to close it. It's whatever you prefer to do. And here's what it looks like with a zigzag um, on the inside and that's what it looks like on the outside. So pick what you would like to do with that. The next thing we're gonna do is put right sides together, sew the crotch closed, and then I'll show you how to do the casing for the legs. Okay, we're gonna use bias tape to go around the leg to form a casing. Um, you can purchase this at your fabric store in the Notions aisle, and what it is is a piece of fabric that's cut on the bias, so it has a little bit of stretch, it's about, this particular one is about one inch wide and they fold in both sides towards the middle. Okay, now I noticed when I did this that my um, pattern didn't line up just perfect. So I had to trim off just a little bit of that to make a nice straight line and that's okay. Things happen. So take your bias tape, open it up and fold down about a half an inch. We're going to be working on the right side of our diaper cover to start, um, starting in the crotch area uh, on the right side. Okay, in the crotch area. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, so fold that back and you're going to place your bias tape so it goes right along that outside raw edge. Put it in your machine and you're going to sew um, right on that first fold where that little ditch is in the fold. You're going to just um, line it up and sew and you'll sew all the way around and just take your time especially when you get to things that start to curve a little bit just work a little bit at a time making sure that you stay sewing right in that fold and that you um, keep it right up to the raw edge and you won't have any trouble at all. So I'll see you at the end. So here I am back to where I started. You can see where we had it folded. I cut my bias tape so that I could fold back this side too. And you want those folds 
um, to touch. Let me pull this in a little closer. You want the folds to touch each other, to butt up against each other right there. Keep it nice and straight and just sew over like so. All right. Then you're going to take and you're going to turn it so that your, your um, bias tape gets folded back the, to the fold like that and then to the inside of your diaper cover. All right, you'll have a very nice seam here on the outside. Be folded in like this. You put it back in your machine and you sew right as close as you can to that fold, um, the other fold, the fold on the outside, this one right here. Anyway, you just sew along and what you're doing is forming a casing here that you're going to put your leg elastic in. And I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, I have sewn the rest of the way around, doing little bits at a time, making sure to keep it nice and flat and um, sewing right on that edge. I fold down that last little piece of bias tape and sew right up to where I started, like so. And here's what it looks like on the inside. You have those two joints just butted up right next to each other and that little slit is where we're going to insert our elastic. Okay, I have my elastic on and I'm just going to work it through all the way around and I will meet you at the end. Because there's a folded edge right here, sometimes your safety pin gets stuck in there. Um, this particular time it didn't get stuck for me, it just came right out. But if it would have gotten stuck, anything that will fit down in that hole, um, a pair of uh, embroidery scissor tips or anything like that that you can open that hole up a little bit and then push your safety pin in behind it will help you get it out and my one tip is to be patient you'll get it, it might be a little frustrating but um, just take your time and work it through and you'll get it so now that this is through and I have both ends out I'm going to line them up and on my small elastic I don't try to overlap it I just sandwich them together like this put them under the presser foot give them a good attachment cut them and then pull it down into the casing of the leg all right and so and then I take it and I close that hole with the zigzag just like we did before all right so there's what it looks like on the inside there's what it looks like on the outside so repeat the same process for the other leg okay I'm gonna make a bow for the back I've cut about 18 inches of satin ribbon and just tie it in a bow like you would um, get the little things nice and even like so all right Maybe just a little bit smaller now um, put both of your sides together all right and give it a cut I like to do mine at an angle and then my one tip for working with satin ribbons is to keep it from fraying is to use a lighter and just really quickly just very carefully go down that side and it melts it and it won't fray now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to hand sew it right to the back the center back right there okay so I'm gonna hand sew it on the back I'm doing several <clears throat> stitches up through the center back I didn't go all the way to the front so I was just catching the back of that center of the tie and I've done that like three four times then I'm gonna come up right next to the center <clears throat> up through here um, right there and then I'm gonna go back down and the reason I'm doing this is so that it can't come untied like when you wash it and stuff so anyway I'm gonna do that there and I'm gonna do the same over here on the other side
then I'll tie it off and knot it in the back and it will be done. Okay, here is the little finished diaper cover. Um, there's the front. Here's the back with all of the really cute little ruffles like so and the cute little bow. And if you notice where we turned turned this piece up here, this bottom piece, it's, it um, didn't get down into the leg opening but it still lays really cute. So it's a nice low ruffle but it's still not too low. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this pattern and this tutorial and until next time, this is Cindy. Bye!